Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Nitty Witch Podcast, Episode 7. I am Vanessa Nitty Witch on Instagram and Ravelry. You can find me on Etsy at Nitty Witch Shop or at nittywitch.com. And you can email me at nittywitchshop at gmail.com. You can also pop over to my Instagram and there is an email button on my profile and you can get in contact with me that way. I come to you from Dover, Delaware, where I live with my fiance, Brandon, our children, and my dog, Zeus. Thank you so much to everyone who is here today watching. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It really means the world to me to be able to share this journey with all of you. So this is my channel where I talk about all crafty things. So let's talk about some knitting. So I don't have any FOs for you this week. I did not work on shawlography. Shawlography is done. And that was it. So I did cast on something new. And all of my love is being given to this project. So this project is living in my Black Pearl Magic bag. So <laughs> Shayla, Black Pearl Magic, designed these awesome vinyl bags that are holographic and look at the zipper. I've showed this before, but I cannot give enough love to this bag because it is like now my favorite bag. So living in this bag is my Bay Heaven cardigan. So this is a pattern by Kimberly McElinden. I have knit this before. I showed this on my first podcast episode. I was wearing a blue sweater, and that is this sweater. I love this pattern. It is so simple and mindless and so much fun to knit. So I will show you my progress. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is where I'm at. So this is a bottom-up sweater. And I am knitting this out of Into the World Saratoga Sport in the As One Does colorway. Oh my God. I am loving this. It is like beautiful. It reminds me of a rose garden. And I'm calling this my Rose Heaven cardigan because it just reminds me of a garden of roses. And I love roses. So that is where I'm at with this. I'm knitting these on size five Chagu needles. They are fixed, they are not interchangeable. And let me see what else. And look at this little stitch marker from Clay Cannon. It is a little snowman that has a sorting hat and a Gryffindor scarf. <laughs> I am house Gryffindor. I feel like with all of us 30-somethings, we are all Harry Potter fans. And, like, if you don't know your Harry Potter house, it's like, who are you even? <laughs> so I am a Gryffindor. So that is my Bay Heaven cardigan. I don't – I I have – I want to say I don't have anything more to say about this, but I also don't have enough words because I want to say so much about it because I love it so much and I can't wait for this to be done. And once again, because I don't have a table in front of me, I will be bending down a lot. So I do apologize for that. So the next project that I have been working on is my virus blanket. <laughs> my virus blanket by Jonna Martinez. So let me find where I'm at here. Here we go. My hook is caught. So this is a crochet project. I do also crochet. I tend to like to crochet blankets um, over knitting them and I am getting more into more crochet projects that aren't blankets, and I'll share those with you once I start working on them again. But for now, I am working on the virus blanket, and I have showed this before. I have put a couple more rows on it, so it's starting to grow, and I just love this yarn. I cannot wait for this to be done. So this is Lion Brand Mandala. 
And this is the Gnome colorway. It is 100% acrylic, um, but it is so soft. It is a DK weight. It's not worsted, which is also interesting for Lion Brand because it seems like all of your box store yarns are all worsted weight. Um, if not, maybe like a little bit of fingering, but for the most part, you're going to find size four yarn in like Michael's and Walmart and stuff like that. So to be able to find a DK weight yarn was actually pretty cool. I ordered these from Lion Brand's website because I could not find the color that I wanted in as quantity that I wanted. So I ended up ordering eight skeins of these because I anticipate that that's how big I'd want my blanket. And if I need to add more, I can add more. The only thing that I am worried about with this blanket is the colors. So I have a skein right here. So here, here is the colors and what it looks like. So, so beautiful, first of all. But as this blanket grows, I am a little worried about what that's going to do to the colors. So you see how like there's like this large block of color here and then there's like a large block of color here. As I make my rounds, the colors start to spread out more and you start to get like one row or two rows per color and then it'll be one row per color. So I'm not sure what the striping sequence is going to do as the blanket gets bigger. So we'll see. And I am crocheting this with a size G Furls crochet hook. Furls crochet hooks are my favorite now. They are weighted and they're a little bit heavy. And I love that because it balances like as, I don't know, it's just, it's very ergonomic and it feels really good in my hands. And I, I love these Furls crochet hooks. So that is my virus blanket. I think that the technical term for this patterning is called German shells, but don't quote me on that. Also, there is an amazing video tutorial by Jana on her YouTube channel on how to make this for free. And I also bought the pattern. The pattern is not free, the written pattern but I bought the pattern to go along with the video because I have to see things written down. That's the type of person that I am and how I learned. So even though I saw her do it a million times in the video, I still needed the structure of the written pattern to help me out and help me follow. So if that's how you are, I would suggest maybe doing that as well. But it was, it's so easy and memorizable. Like I haven't been working on this for months and I picked it up again and was able to start crocheting right where I left off because I just remembered the pattern. So super easy, definitely beginner friendly. All you need to know is how to basically slip stitch, single crochet, double crochet. That's it. Super easy. And this is actually living in... <laughs> This is the bag to my Knitter's Prideful Mindful blocking mats. My blocking mats came in this bag and I thought it made a really good project bag for my blanket. So that's what I've been using it for. I feel like I'm going through my projects very quickly, but I do have a lot of things to show you today. So I'm trying to, for the sake of time, keep this moving. So I'm sorry if I'm going quickly. The next project that I gave a little bit of love to this few weeks is my Cozy Memories blanket by um, Shelly DuPont. I had to look that up because I wasn't sure. So here is, well, let me say, this is my bag from Fate's Thread. Fate's Thread is one of my favorite bag makers. Her bags are very well priced, very well made, and she always has a ton of them in stock. You never have to wait for an update. There is always something there for you to want to buy. So that is that bag. And I put another square on, let's find it, here it is. Just kidding. 
here it is. So I added this purple square here. And here is what I'm going this way with it side to side. So it's kind of hard to show you all of it, but if you see, I've got quite a little bit done on the width. So I am expecting this to be about a king size blanket. It's, that's what I wanna make it to be. So that's why it's so large. But I modified this pattern by adding more stitches on either side. These squares are supposed to be probably about like that big. And I extended it to make them bigger. I thought that if I made the squares bigger that it would help me finish the blanket faster. What it actually has done is it has made it so that it's taken me way too long to knit one square. It takes me a few hours or a couple days because I get bored and I have to put it down. And instead of just being done in an hour and knitting a square, now it's taking me forever to make just one square. And it's a little frustrating to me. So I don't work on this as much as I originally planned. This has taken me, I have mentioned, this is my fifth year I'll be knitting this blanket. It is definitely a long-term project with no end in sight. And it's just, I give it love when I give it love. I wanted to bring out this though, because Advent season is approaching. And this is a very, very good Advent project, which is what I use my Advents for. So if you're looking for a pattern, oh look, the sun is shining. If you're looking for a pattern for Advent season, the Cozy Memories blanket is definitely one of those good patterns to make. So maybe this will be done in 2030, who knows? But the point of it is that it's fun, right? And that's all that matters. I am using a size two needle to create this blanket. I probably could have went up a little bit more on the needle size. I don't know what I was thinking. So <laughs> I am making it on a size two needle. So that's all I have for works in progress. And I have for you a ton of acquisitions. So please bear with me as I get through these. I have been collecting things and there's a few things coming up. So here we go. So my first acquisition is from the Crazy Sock Lady Co. And it is Mama Jess's Knits sock set. So I have been looking for a Christmas sock set. I don't know why I think I'm going to knit a pair of Christmas socks in time for Christmas. I don't know why I think that. But I definitely saw this and thought that I wanted to try. <laughs> but it's a beautiful set. And I was so excited to get it in. So that is my first yarn acquisition. I have not heard of Mama Jess's yarns before this, so I'm really looking forward to giving this a try. Speaking of Advents and Advent projects, I am a subscriber of Row One Yarns. I have been meaning to tell you this for like months, and I keep forgetting because every time the package comes in, I get super excited, and I open it, and I completely forget about it during podcasting time. So here we are with the Rowan Yarn subscription. This is for this past month, so there's no spoilers here. So this is $40 a month, I believe. She raised her price. It is worth it because of how much work goes into making the subscription the way that it is. And by that, I mean... Each one of these is hand wound. So there is no winding your mini skeins. She's already done it for you, which is so 
I'm so thankful for, like, I get to open my package and start knitting or crocheting with my row one minis without any work going into it or any effort. Each one of these is labeled with the dyer and the colorway name. I would open this package, but if I did, it would just crinkle a lot. So I'm not going to do that. But if you can see, like, there is the dyer. And every month, there is a different dyer. So for this month, it was the Red Pansy. I've never heard of the Red Pansy before. It come. I don't know what happened to my little package, but it does come with the information inside with a little blurb talking about the dyer and where they're from and how they started dyeing and all of the colorway names. So this is the best subscription service that I have ever had. It is one of my favorites. And if you're into minis and mini projects, I highly suggest signing up for this subscription. It's a lot of fun. And it's also really nice to learn new dyers and see new dyers and like they're all indie dyed. So you get a little bit of color to put into your blanket every month. And what's cool about it is every dyer has their own aesthetic. So every month, what you get is completely different. So that's my row one yarn. My next acquisition, I did a coffee vlog, if you guys caught that, because I got in Knit Coffee Co. I drink it all. I did get this awesome sweater from them, Brew One Knit Two Knit Coffee Company. I love this. It is so soft. It is a great shirt. It was only like $25. Definitely worth it. <coughs> Excuse me. The Knit Coffee is amazing. It has a smooth taste. It just it's an Italian roast, which is around a medium roast. And it was just so good. I drank the whole bag <laughs> in like a week and a half. I don't even remember, but I vlogged it and then I drank it and I don't have any more left. So that was Knit Coffee Com Company. I don't have the bag for you. But another coffee company that I wanted to mention that I am absolutely enjoying as well is Bones Coffee Company. And they had a, I don't know if they still have it, but they had a coupon code out for 20% off. And I use that for this. And this is the Franken Bones. And this is a chocolate hazelnut. I am a hazelnut fanatic. I use hazelnut creamer in my coffee. And this is so good. Like you can taste the aftertaste of chocolate and it it's smooth and it is just so flavorful and really, really good. So that's Bones Coffee Company. I would definitely give them a try. I have the whole bean form because I like to grind mine and they sell it ground. And I think they even have a K-cup variety package if you have a Keurig. So plenty of reasons to try out Bones Coffee Company. Because we were talking about spinning last episode, I went ahead and I went and bought the Respect the Spindle book by Abby Frankmont. I think it's Abby. Yes, Abby Frankmont. And this is one of the best spindle books that I believe that are out there that I have read. It is full of information and it gives you more information than necessary for you to start spinning. So don't be intimidated and feel like you have to go out and buy a book to start spinning. Just start doing it. Look up a YouTube tutorial. I am going to be filming one, but before I put out a YouTube tutorial on anything, especially for my first one, I'm going to make sure that I have my knowledge straight. So I'm going to be reading this book first and skimming through it and just making sure that I have my facts right before I bring you any information that might be misleading. Um, but don't wait for me. Try. <laughs> Go ahead and start spinning. You don't need to know all the mechanics. You don't need to know 
what type of twists there are and staple lengths and wool and all of those things. You will figure that out as you go and you can learn as you go. Just pick up a spindle and just do it <laughs> like Nike. <laughs> so this is a really good book. I do suggest this book if you are starting to spin on a spindle. Um, Amazon has it. It's great. So that is Respect the Spindle. Another book that I went and I bought is Dear to My Heart. This is not knitting related, but I wanted to mention it because she is my idol. And that is Elvira. So Elvira has been my idol since I was a kid, which probably shouldn't be a thing because she's very suggestive. But my mom let me watch it. And I was a kid and everything, everything sexual just flew over my head. Like I had no idea as a kid, like any of that. I just knew that there was this gothic princess and she was absolutely gorgeous and magical. And I used to watch her on USA up all night. That is dating myself because I'm old and USA Up All Night hasn't been a thing since like the 80s. So this is a signed copy with the Certificate of Authenticity. I got this for about $35 off of Premier Collectibles website. And I just can't wait to read this and find out more about her and her story and her journey into who she is. She's done an amazing thing. She's been a character and the same character her entire like career. It is, she has transcended generations and I can't wait to read her story. So this is on my list. Another book, now as you can see, I have a book addiction. I love books. But another book that I thought that was or has been helpful to me, if you have followed my Instagram posts and stories and maybe Vlogtober, a couple episodes of Vlogtober, you'll see that I pull a tarot card every day. I do this every day, whether or not I post it, I am still pulling these cards to learn and to help myself get better at reading tarot. I mentioned that I don't read tarot reversals because, well, there's a lot of reasons because, and the main reason is because there's a standardized way to read cards upright. There is a meaning for each card and what it means upright. Then when you go into reversals, it goes into, well, you could read them this way, or you could read them this way, or you could read them that way. It's too much and it's not standardized. So I went and I bought this book on tarot reversals by Mary Greer and I'm starting to read it and understand and really appreciate and like where her interpretations are coming from and how she is interpreting the reverse cards. So if you're into the tarot and you are looking to learn about reversals, then I'm going to go ahead and recommend this book because this is the book that I am using and I really like it so far. So I'm not going to say much more on that, but if you're interested in reading tarot, I, I should have grabbed the other book, but I really suggest Biddy Tarot. Her name is Bridget Esselmont and she wrote a book on tarot card meanings and her meanings are so intuitive and they are the traditional meanings broken down for you in a way that you can understand. So if you're interested in starting your tarot journey, reach out to me. I can help you and I can share with you what I've learned and we can talk about it. But that is the tarot reversals book. And I'm going to see if this will change my mind on reading reversals. So we'll see. I wanted to share with you a deck that I bought. I did post this on Instagram, but this is the deck that I am using most. And don't worry, I'm going to bring this back into knitting. This is coming back to knitting right now. So this is the Tarot de Luce, and it is a very beautiful 
like whimsical deck with beautiful illustrations. And I'm showing you this because this is the main deck that I am choosing to use to read right now because it is small. It is a little bit smaller than a traditional tarot deck and because it's it's really pretty and it's just, I love it. So what I'm gonna be doing because of the size of this deck, I'm gonna be crocheting, maybe knitting, I'm not sure, but crochet tends to be more dense and I like that for protection. So I think I will be crocheting myself a case to put these in to carry them in my purse because I have a leather case on Etsy for my miniature deck, but the leather cases for the standardized decks are a lot bigger and this deck just isn't that big. So I'm going to customize and I'm going to crochet myself a little deck to put that in or a little box to put this in. Case, box, you know what I mean. But right now... I have it living in this little Ipsy bag. Ipsy is a makeup subscription that I don't get. My sister gets it and she saves all the little bags for me because she knows that I love them. And every month you get like a couple samples of makeup and they send it to you in a little makeup bag and they're perfect for tarot. So I just keep my tarot cards in there. All right, those are my acquisitions. Coming back to what we're here for and knitting and crafting, I'm going to share with you my advents that I have purchased. So the first advent that I purchased, since advent season is approaching, I figured this would be a good time to talk about them. So the first advent that I bought was the David's Tea Advent Calendar. So I have said before that I am not a tea drinker, I am a coffee drinker. However, there are 24 different teas in here. One of them I have to like, right? Like out of 24, one of them I have to like. So I am a little excited to begin this journey into tea and see if I can like tea because I have had tea from Tivana. I've had all different types of teas and it just doesn't... I don't like it enough to want to keep drinking it. So I'm really hoping that there's a tea in here that I really like enjoy and want to keep drinking. So I thought this was a good way. And I, it's not that like tea is disgusting and I don't like it. I, j I can drink it and I do enjoy it. I just don't like crave it. And hopefully that'll change with this. So I'm really looking forward to this advent calendar. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm not sure if those are still available. That was 50 something dollars, like $55 or something like that from their website. The next advent calendar, I guys, I went a little crazy with the advent calendars this year. So I wanted an advent for like everything. I almost bought a sock advent from Target. Like if it has advent calendar on it, I keep buying it. So the next advent that I bought is from Pearl Smith. And it came in this box. And the theme is, I think it's something to do with coffee or cozy coffee or cozy tea. Something to do with like a cozy drink. And this is the box that it came in. And Pearl Smith is a stitch marker maker that makes stitch markers out of freshwater pearls. And they're absolutely gorgeous. I have a set from her that I adore and I cannot wait to see what's in this advent calendar. Yeah, it's taking everything in me not to like open it, but I love surprises. So I will never open an advent calendar early. Like some people will open the whole advent calendar. I enjoy the surprise every day, so I won't do that, but I can't wait to look inside and see what this is, but I am waiting for December 1st to even crack open the box. I got to bend down because this one is heavy. So the next advent calendar that I bought, this is my main yarn advent. And for this year, I went with Chelsea. Oh, 
how about we not show my whole address? So I went with Chelsea Lux Yarns and I am so excited. Like I started to open it and then realized that there's stuff on top and I was just going to make a mess and I don't want to, I don't want to peek. I don't want to see the surprise. So I'm leaving it in this box until December 1st and look at this like I got her um she offered like two different options for the kits one was just like a regular advent option and the other one was with added goodies so I got the one with added goodies because how can I not and I think I got sparkle if that was an option I ordered it so long ago I don't remember but I think I added a sparkle option. So I'm really, Chelsea Yarns is an amazing dye aesthetic. And when I saw her open the advent calendar on her Vlogmas last year, I had major FOMO. So this year, no FOMO for me. And yay. So that is all I have for acquisitions. I'm like, look, oh no, I take it back. I have one more. I forgot. So keeping it with Advents. So this Advent season, I have tea, I have stitch markers, I have yarn, and in this bag, I have spinning. So this is hip strings advent calendar and this is like a 12 day calendar and they're doing a spin along so this is fiber and this is going to be a spin along so let me see it's so it's 12 and every day for the 12 days you'll be opening a half ounce of fiber Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize she strung it. Oh my God. I am so happy. Like, I'm going to hang this up right behind me. Oh my goodness. What an amazing amount of work went into this. Unbelievable. Like, the work that people put into these advent calendars... Thank you so much because they really are a joy. So I will be hanging this behind me. And each one of these has a half ounce of fiber. And I will be spinning them together into one skein. And probably chain plying. If you don't know what all of that means, don't worry. It's just a way of plying your yarn without using multiple strands so you can ply the yarn back on itself with one single. I don't know if that makes sense, but don't worry. It will in the future if you decide to take up spinning. So this is up to six ounces of fiber. So it is a six ounce. Usually most fiber comes in four ounces. So having an additional two ounces is going to make a heftier stain, which is awesome. So I will be trying to keep up and trying to spin and advent knit and I got myself into it. <laughs> but that's okay because it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a lot of fun to share on Vlogmas with you guys, which I will be doing Vlogmas this year. So Vlogtober was a good introduction into what I need to be doing and how to produce them and edit them and the best way to get everything rolling together. I'm so glad I did Vlogtober for that reason because now for Vlogmas I'm prepared and I'm really excited to share all of these things with you. So that was, I'm sorry, that was fun. <laughs> All right, so the last thing that I've been up to is I went and upgraded my switch light. I had a switch light, which was about this big, and I found an Animal Crossing Edition switch, which when those were released, they came out and they sold out like immediately. 
And I didn't need one because I already had a Switch, so I wasn't going to buy another one. But the plan this year is to get Switches for our girls. So instead of going and buying like a third Switch Lite, I just am going to give her mine, which I take very good care of my things. So she will be getting my Switch Lite and I have the Animal Crossing Switch because the upgraded Switch is just a little too much hardware for our littles. So the Switch Lite is a better option for the kids because it has less components. Anyway, that's all to tell you that I have been playing my Switch and haven't been knitting as much. And I feel a little bit guilty about that, but not that guilty because I'm having so much fun. I was a little disappointed because I was playing Animal Crossing on my Switch Lite. And when I transferred the data over to my new Switch, it deleted my entire freaking town. So I have to start Animal Crossing all over again. And that's fine because it's so much fun. Like I don't even care that I had to start over but it's a little slow going. The game that I have been really involved in so far is Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm loving this game. It's a game that kind of, people compare it to Breath of the Wild, but I don't think it's, I don't think that's a good comparison. I don't know what to compare it to, but it is an amazing game. You can choose to be a male or a female lead, which as a female or a woman is amazing because when you role play and you're playing RPGs, you want to see yourself as a character that you can associate with. And they're always men. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But it's nice to have a woman lead every now and then in the game. So I am Phoenix. And it's all about like gods and goddesses and Olympus and it has a lot of Greek mythology in it, and it's funny, and it has been a great game. So that has what that has been what has been taking my time away from my knitting is my Nintendo Switch. I've also been zooming a lot. I am part of the Love and Stitches membership group, which I've mentioned a hundred times. It is an amazing group of people, and we have zooms every day consistently, and. It is just so much fun to sit down and pop on Zoom with someone, even if there's not a Zoom going and you want to hop on Zoom, you can use the Zoom room to just hop on with someone and knit together. And that is such an amazing feature to have because it solidifies community. And that is one of the greatest things about the knitting community is getting to associate with each other and meet. And with Zoom, and the pandemic, it has forced us all onto Zoom. Not forcefully, but it has opened up this new platform for us where we weren't doing that as much before. We weren't Zooming, we didn't have virtual knit nights. Now all of a sudden there's virtual knit nights everywhere and you can knit from the comfort of your own home. And that is so much fun. So that has been what I've been up to when I'm not knitting. So before I let you go, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about you. So for my positivity quote this week, I have for you, never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a lesson, not a life sentence. Okay. So we are the hardest and most critical on ourselves. When you hold a grudge against someone, you let that go, right? You don't hold grudges forever, or maybe you do. But the goal is to let them go and let your grudges go. And we have an easy time doing that when it comes to another person. Like I have a grudge against, you know, Pamela because of whatever reason, I'm gonna let that go and you let it go. But we don't let go of the grudge that we hold against ourselves. We are more likely to hold a grudge against ourselves for something we have done or something we have said in our past. And we have a hard time just letting it go when it comes to us. So I'm here to tell you, it was not a life sentence 
it is okay to let that grudge go against yourself. Be kind to yourself. Let just, <laughs> just give yourself the same consideration that you give to other people. You are kind to other people. You're nice to other people. Be nice to you. And don't be a victim of your past. The past is that. It is the past. Live in the present. Move forward. Let it go. Be kind to yourself. All right. I had so much fun sharing everything with you guys. I'm sorry if it was very scattered and all over the place, but that's kind of how I am these days. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the time that you spent with me. Happy knitting, be beautiful, be you, and make magic wherever you go. Have a good day, guys.